Hey guys, Dan Carr here, Coach of Wise Ocean Pods, and welcome back to another episode of our round preview series. On today's episode, I will be talking through the round to come in round three, also talking about my trades that are most likely going to happen over the next couple of days. Um, I'll also be running through the most popular trade-in targets and out targets in the community, giving my insights on what I think my thoughts are on certain players, why I wouldn't and would be trading in certain players, um, and also trying to give different perspectives on what I would be doing if I was, my team was in a different situ- different situation at this point in time. So, um, I'll also be talking about some strategy points that I've sort of brainstormed a little bit, just really recapping where we sort of at. Obviously, we're two weeks into our fantasy now. This is our second trades and something to really keep mind of that you know you you really want to keep moving forward you just don't want to sideways trade too much but i'll get into that a little bit later and i'll also be touching on captains as this is the last time you'll be hearing from me for the week so without further ado let's sort of get into it all right so like i said off the top i want to talk about some strategy points that i've sort of thought about before really getting into what i'm doing for the week so First off, really, this is the probably the last week that you really want to do any fix-up trades. Maybe maybe the second last week. So generally, most years we have two to three weeks that you really want to do fix-up trades. But I think this year is a little bit unique in a way that um, with the buys, I think a lot of teams are in very good situations that they're starting to look at upgrades. If not this week, definitely next week, I think. Um so definitely this week is your last week to really jump off those mid failed mid prices and premiums and really look at what upgrades you want to do next week, whether that's, you know, jumping off a a, a failed mid pricer, like not sorry, a a, a mid pricer that's made you a little bit money, say a Bonner, if he has another bad week you can jump off him. Um and say a nat 5, if he has another bad week, bad week, then you can jump off him and you use those those two together and you get an upgrade rather than downgrade to you know a mid-pricer that's going to make up cash and say a Powell or a Dan Rosier or such. You're really looking for that upgrade to the top line, guys, not a downgrade to the midline. So that's just that's my general thoughts. Um, yeah, just something to keep in mind that you really don't want to play this um, game where you're just constantly switching around players that are similar in price. You really want to... The aim of the game is to get to those top-line guys. So just one... That's one point. The second point I wanted to touch on is now that we've gone through one series of the early round buys, we now have the Brisbane and Colton players available to us that we sort of didn't look at much in the... In the um, and our starting squads because they did have the early round buy in round two and that we'd only got to see two games of them before they went away for the buy. So um, I think a lot of us really avoided them. Just looking at the numbers here, you've got Dane Zorko at 8%. I don't have any Lions players on my team, I don't think. Um, yeah, so just keeping in mind that we do have these players now available. Um, if you're l- looking for you know an upgrade target, I would probably recommend Dunkley. His looks really good. Second year in the Brisbane Colours. Um, I know these scores probably are a little bit inflated because Lockie Neal was away. Um, but yeah, he looks really good and could definitely bump up his average in the sec- with his just natural progression at the Lions. So um, Lockie Neal is also one that he could look at. I know he's probably regressed a little bit since Dunkley's inclusion in the in the Lions outfit but um, we know how good he is he can rack it up at the best of times so someone to keep an eye on and keep on your watch list if he does go on a run but not at this point in time in my opinion um, move over with Colton there's not we've been pretty lucky we're fortunate that these two teams aren't super fantasy relevant at the, this point in time but there are a few people that you want to keep an eye on like I think Nick Newman's probably one that we need to keep an eye on. I think he could definitely push a top six defenders if, you know, he goes on a run like he did at the end of last year. Now with no Doc, um, yeah, definitely one to keep an eye on. And he's very unique if you want to jump on if he's your first upgrade. But I think we have pretty good depth in the back line at this point in time. Um, yep, keep an eye on Sam Walsh as well. I think he's only two to three weeks away now. So 
if you're keen to jump on him at some stage, then yeah, keep an eye on him. I don't think we're too keen on anyone else. Um, the only other one I probably want to touch on is Zach Williams. If you didn't start him, um, you probably could jump on. I Personally, I probably think there's better options around him, like a Dan Rosier if you didn't have him, or um, who else is up? Um, Windhager. So, new... Where is he? Why? Um, news for the week is that Brad Crouch is now out for two months with a knee surgery, I believe. Um, so that pretty much just cements Windhager's um, position as a full-time mid at St Kilda. So he could definitely receive a big bump in his scoring. Like we scored an 83 on the weekend. I think he's only priced at about 65. So that's you know that's already 15 points unders. Could definitely be a good pick, but. I think we can wait one more week. He's still got a pretty high break even. He's not going to go up a super amount of cash. If he scores another 80, you may miss out on maybe 20k or something like that. So nothing too significant. Whereas if you didn't have a damn Rosio, definitely one I'd be jumping on at this stage. Um, and the only reason I probably prefer these two options over Williams is that in my eyes, just when I watched Williams in the first two weeks, is he hasn't been super impressive. He The only reason he's sort of got to these scores is that um, when they're in the back line and they're sort of chipping it around, he's, he's getting that, and he's getting those cheap little 45s that really make no impact um, to the game. So it's not encouraging where I'd rather him, you know, be that line breaker and really have some impressive moments that really samples that he is a main guy back there, not just getting cheap all around there and not scoring 70s. I would like him to sort of jump up a little bit. And is probably one I'm looking at moving out pretty shortly if he doesn't improve slightly. Does, don't get me wrong, he definitely has a lot of money to still make. Um, I didn't actually look at what he's priced at, but I'd say it'd be like close to 50, if not 55. And, you know, he's going at 70 or so. So he's definitely got a few more points to gain. So nothing too bad there. But enough rambling. Let's move on to my third point, and is that... It is now round three, and we start to have a lot more significant players go on the bye. And I've seen a lot of discussions out there in the fantasy community about what to do with these guys that are on the bye this week and are sort of that top-line guy. So we're talking Olocky Whitfield, you're talking Tom Green, you're talking also um, Flanders, even a Miller and a Rao, these guys are quite popularly owned. That are sort of that top line guy, and in my opinion, if they are in the top to six, top six to eight players of their line, you hold. Because at the end of the day, you want these guys in your team, whether that's when you come towards the end of the season. So why not hold them now? I get you may want to chase the points and you may want to win the round, but your team is going to benefit a lot more by just benching them and you know upgrading around them to improve your team overall and then you can get those guys back in you know come round four so that's just my opinion um definitely with Whit uh, whitfield green and flanders i think those guys are quite probably green and flanders are probably a bit more clearer as a top guys of the line whitfield's probably borderline but i think he's looking so good it's just a matter and one thing I thought about recently is what is going to happen when um, Isaac Cumming comes back. I think he's still six to eight weeks away, so right, he's still a fair while away, and we'll get a lot of decent scores from Whitfield until then. Um, but yeah, what happens when um, Isaac Cumming comes back and probably takes a few of those points off of him, and then he probably drops out of that. So he's one I'm playing with that you could probably move off of and get to a, a guy that needs to be top six. Um, so, yeah, that's just my opinion. Whereas maybe a Miller, again, he's probably borderline. I'm um, tossing and turning whether he's going to be top top eight. I probably don't think so. While he's put up some good scores, he it's probably isn't quite there just yet. Um, Rao, definitely I'd be jumping off. I don't think he'll sustain. Sorry. I don't think he'll keep putting these numbers up, you know. Um, he definitely has been a good pick to start the year, but they're definitely not going to continue these numbers, in my opinion. We've seen it in batches before, and then he just drops off, and we def definitely give you a 60 at some stage. So, 
Whereas, there was also another player I want to talk about. Uh, Toby Green, he's quite highly owned. Um, haven't seen too many teams with him in there, so maybe it's more autofill teams. But, um, yeah, definitely would be jumping off him. He has been pretty poor to start the year and definitely one that's going to be losing some cash and, yeah, jump off if you had him. Whereas, you know, rookies that had the buy, definitely hold him. There's no reason why, especially at Cadman. Um, yeah, he's just skyrocketing price. He's had two easy good matchups and scored quite well. Um, negative three break even. No need to be worried there. Even a Harrison Thomas, I'll sort of get in. No, Harvey Thomas, sorry. Um, I'll probably sort of get into him in the trade-in targets, but he's one that I'll probably wait a week. There's no, re no reason to grab him this week. Um, he's not going to go up in cash, obviously, with a buy. But definitely one to jump on next week. Um, but there is some concerns there with his twos poorer scores last week so that's just that so that's really what my thoughts are is that you shouldn't be sidewaysing trades these guys but i also think that you shouldn't have more than two of these guys um that's a lot of points that you're going to be missing out say you've got a tom green that's on the bench and you're fielding a sharp as such you know you had to fourth, run the fourth mid midfielder that's potentially you know 40 say 40 points that you're missing out that week. Um, but if you've got three of them, and they're all going sort of that at that rate, a Lockie Whitfield's going at 100, you have in the field, you know, um, a Howes, probably a bad example. He's been going scoring quite well, but that's probably another 30 points that you're missing out on. And a... What's... What's what's Flanders averaging? He is averaging 100 as well. Um then you're fielding a Wilson. That's probably a better example. He, if he's, if Slander's scoring, you know, it's 90s to 100, and you're fielding Wilson, that's 40 to 50 points that you're missing out. So, so if you have all three of them, that's upwards of, you know, 130 points that you're missing out for the week. And that can really hurt you at this stage of the, you know, the league, the tournament, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, just my thoughts. If you have more than two, I'd probably try and trade one of them that you don't think is going to be top of the line that would be Whitfield in my opinion um yeah and if you have any more than two then yeah you're really struggling so but don't waste trades really just this year is a time to really generate cash and make small even just make small potential upgrades in your side like a like most people are doing this week with a sexton to a power so that's just one my thoughts and probably my last thoughts about really not strategy but just really recapping of what we've seen so far um this season is that guns and rookies probably has been the way to go at the start of the season which is probably what we all really thought given that it's going to be best 18 obviously the best the way we mostly think about best 18 is that you really have a maximum amount of primos on your field that are going to hit ceiling scores because ceiling scores are what really matters in um, these best 18s because obviously your lower scores drop off and those mediocre scores can really don't really benefit you as much um, where you really want those you know 120 pluses to really bump up what you score that week so but yeah we'll see a bit of a benefit for these mid price strategies um, come out of out of the buyers maybe you know after towards round 10 and see, we should notice that the uh, value of, you know, the mid price of teams be quite noticeably higher than the the Guns and Rookies team. So, yeah, that's just what I think um, and quite hopeful given my ranking at this point in time. But um, that's just, I think that's pretty common across the fantasy community that that's just the way it's going to go. Um, anything else I wanted to talk about before I get into the players? Don't really think about anything else. No. All right. So without further ado, let's really get into what I'm doing this week. So like I said in my review, I was pretty happy with how my squad is structuring up. So looking at here, mostly everyone is green besides a few stragglers here and there. Um, pretty confident with all my team's, um, what's it called? Job security, so I don't think anyone's going to be dropped. I know there's a few whispers that Lazaro's may be dropped, but I don't think so. He's had such a good preseason. I think um, they just made that sub just to add a different dynamic, and they know and they needed to try something, given that they had lost all momentum and now when they lost a 
pretty significant lead. So, but it definitely wasn't Lazaro's fault. I don't think he did anything out of the ordinary. Um, he's been doing quite well, and I expect him to still be in the side. But everything else did quite well. Um, I expect everyone to stay in the side, especially even Barnett. Um, I know he played poorly, but um, the coach has already come out and said that he will stay in the side. So nothing to worry about there. Um, Clark even probably was one that we were worried about as well, but now with Danger out, it just boosts his job security even more. Um, and he has started his cash generation a little bit. Has a nicer matchup this week, so we'll see how he goes. So what am I doing this week? So it's not really too far off. I don't think it's anything off of what I thought I was doing on Monday. Um, it is literally just Caulfield and where is he? Sexton going to Pow. And I'm going to Pinky. He's not a forward. He is a defender. So the reason I've gone with Pink, probably out of most of the backline guys, is that he's gonna he's got a low break even. He's got his good job security, so he's gonna make, he's gonna be a bit of a slower burn, I think. Um, you know, looking at his scoring history, he's only scored the thirty two last week, and the forty nine this week. But he is getting at least ten disposals. He's just got a few more uh, tackles last week, so hopefully he can keep up. You know, forties to fifties, and he'll be a bit of a slower burn. But it's better than nothing at this point in time because I'm not confident that. Um, a Shaw maker comes in and plays at this point in time. I think a lot of the media have come out and said that he, while he is fantasy relevant, it's just he doesn't have the brain to be, um, yeah, playing AFL at this day and time. So, yeah, that's my trades most likely for this week. We'll see what um, team announcements comes up with, but uh, I can't see why this would change. Really promising on power. I think he could push um, top the top line in the in the forward line just can hide behind that forward status a lot um his role is one of the better ones obviously main midfielder if not second fiddle to luke, luke davis uniac in the north side and i also like that north are quite a high scoring side in fan, in fantasy terms so um he definitely can get amongst it um can tackle quite obviously just probably didn't get them on the first week and can definitely rack up the ball should can should consistently see twenties to high twenties um, disposal. So really like him, and really just jumping off Sexton that forward status that uh, forward um, time he got last week really scared me. Um, he could definitely drop a thirty quite easily if he plays in that role. Do I think it continues full time? Probably not. I do think he'll probably go back to half back. Um, this week, I think it was just a spell of the moment thing. They had another defender coming in off the sub, so really watch for teams if you are keen to hold him. But I just think it's his buy. It's the perfect time to get off him. He hasn't been doing exactly what we sort of expected. Really had that really breakout game and with an 80 when we didn't really have it on field and scored the 67 last week, but only scored the 49 this week. So definitely one that has isn't doing what we sort of expected. So it's one we can jump off. Now that it's his bye, and Caulfield has been rolled out for 10 to 12 weeks, I believe. And yeah, if you don't mind having a red dot there, I just think it's too much money on the bench. Just might as well get it off and uh, get someone in that's going to make some coin over the next little while. Also, banks me 79k, so I can do a little bit next week. Um, just always another reminder that always plan your trades ahead one week, so. Um, that 79k next week you know to give a little bit of insight on what i'm looking at would be you know i like to set off the top i'm looking at an upgrade next week so um whether that's you know getting off a bonner and say a fife putting those money together and then going up to one of the top line guys in the midfield or a forward line so that's just the way i sort of think about it so really just trying to keep ahead i'm actually two or three weeks ahead of my planning because I'm also planning to get off Grundy at his buy as well in round five so there's a lot of planning going through and that's just how it needs to be when it's in the buys so it's just one of those things to keep in mind but now let's oops, let's get into what you're all here for and look at some popular trade in targets for the week so 
Like I said off top, Tom Power, excellent pick. Has the role, has the value. He's only priced at 65. So if he can go at 80, that's 15 points unders. Like I said, can push top six in the forward line. That's a smash pick, and hopefully we can hold him for a fair while until you know later into the later buyers. So um, really enjoy this pick. I think a lot of people are jumping on him. I think he's already jumped up. Yeah, jumped up to seven and a half percent. I think he was at 0.5 percent in the before the round ended. So um, Massimo De Marozzi, a smash pick. I picked him up last week. Really happy with him. Um, only thing I will say is don't expect 90s each week. Um, Last week was a bit of a one that I wouldn't expect again. Had the eight marks. Obviously, Hawthorne played this very keepy off ball, which I wouldn't expect to continue. As a Hawthorne supporter, I, I definitely don't want to see that again. I would rather them, you know, try and play fast and just try and win the game rather than just try and hold the ball off and play keepy off. So um, don't expect him to get that again. But um, the one thing I do like about his role is that he does work really hard up and down the wing. Um, even though he's coming off the half back, he also gets tackles in the stoppage and comes off the back of stoppage quite often. Um, Hawthorne are really utilising him as that lethal kick into the midfield and, you know, making really trusts him in using that left boot of his to break the lines because he is a, a booming kick. So definitely probably the last week to pick him up. Um, similar to power, priced at 55. Hopefully he can go 70 to 80s. Um, and get us through for a little while. But even if he drops to 60, his break-even will still be a little bit lower and probably can hold him for another week. Does have the Cats this week, so um, it'll be interesting to see. I don't think the Cats are too difficult in terms of defender matchups. Let's have a quick look here. Uh, they were last year, but I think this year is a little bit different. I think they're just a neutral matchup. And they had the Pies next week in Adelaide, so... Be interesting to see. Nothing too, nothing too to worry about. I think the Pies actually even give up a little bit of numbers to defenders. So, be an interesting, interesting one. So, yeah, smash pick. Matt Crouch. Matt Crouch is pretty well known that I'm not a huge fan of Matt Crouch. Like, he's a good footballer. He's a massive cu accumulator. Obviously, he's had the 33 touches and the 37 touches. Just doesn't do it in other, any other avenues. Really, he had like six touches, six tackles last week which is a bit of an anomaly for him. He doesn't usually get around the tackles as much. This is usually his sort of stat line. Um, but at the end of the day, he's making coins, so if you're looking to get another mid-pricer into your midfield, um, definitely can pick him up. He's going to make some coin. Um, won't, won't be top 8 midfielder. He's not going to continue at 110 or 111. He's going to drop, you know, a 70 or an 80 at some stage when he doesn't get these possessions. Um, one thing I do sort of like and I do agree with the community is now that he's not a main tag target for these guys, um, for Crows. Obviously, Dawson's in there a lot and he'll be the main tag target as he's a bit more damaging, whereas Crouch is sort of that just distributor. Um, but the other thing I wanted to flag with him is that Crows haven't won a game yet. They've been pretty disappointing to start of the year. Um, obviously, we had pretty big raps in the, the AFL fairness. I'm not sorry, the AFL had some pretty big raps on them to break into the top eight this year. Obviously, you're just missing out last year, but they haven't won a game this year against probably two mid-table teams, in my opinion. You know, both of these team guys probably won't make um, finals. So, are they going to have to change something up? It's been pretty publicly spoken about that Crouch and Laird do the exact same thing in that midfield so they really need someone else in there um, do I think he's going to get dropped probably not um, so wouldn't be too worried there but definitely something to flag that he could be moving out of that midfield if they look to change things up eventually but I don't think that's on the horizon just yet I think they'll stick to their guns moving on to Caleb Sarong um Again, he's probably an upgrade target that will be definitely be top uh, eight, if not top four in the, the midfield. So I think he's a good play. Probably will have a tougher matchup this week compared to previous ones. So um, probably one I'm not looking to jump on, If even if I did have the cash, just with a few harder matchups. you got Colton, you got bloody poor, but then he does go on a bit of a nicer run after that. So maybe if he can jump on at round six, that's probably my target, but... Um, yeah, definitely 
maybe not willing to spend up at that time at this time point in time because really at the end of the day like i said off the top you're looking for value you're looking to get those underpriced uber premiums that are going to be that top of the line whereas he's sort of at his max price you wouldn't expect him to go up too much more we haven't seen a player go to 1.1 mil but i guess he could probably be the first with his break even quite low so but he'll definitely come back down to earth and be achievable at some stage in the season uh, Wangalim Malura, really like him. Um, obviously talked about him a lot in the preseason. Probably got off to a slower start than what we thought, but like I said in my review series, there's that he just looked completely different with Sinclair in, back in the team. He just looked a bit more thirsty to get the ball every time Sinclair sort of had it in the back line. He was working really hard to sort of take the ball off him, get that cheap plus six, and then distribute the ball. So um, definitely one to jump on if you're keen um i personally i think my back lines got plenty of depth at this point in time i can't make my trades uh to get him in but definitely one i could jump on at, at some stage he's got the bulldogs coming up in a couple of weeks um that could be a juicy matchup to jump on um yeah definitely if you can get up to him uh, grab him he should be around that top six mark probably probably have him just outside probably won't see these scores consistently but if he can break, you know, that 100 average, then that's that's close enough to top six, and you can hold him for the majority of the season until sort of luxury luxury trades. So doesn't have the early buy as well, which is also a bonus. Isaac Keeney, still people are jumping on. Um, it's a really interesting one. Would I be doing it? <sighs> it's it's tough. It's really tough because these are two easy matchups that he should go you know, ballistic and again, should be at least 120s, um, so, would I be doing it, fuck it, yeah, let's do it, I, I reckon, sorry, he's gonna, uh, bump up in cash and, you know, jump over that 900k mark, he's clear number one at, as a forward at the moment, um, the only flag I will say is that Taylor Adams is a test to play this week, um, personally, I don't think Taylor Adams is gonna play this week specifically, he should start in the VFL or whatever their, their um, league, second league is up there, and, you know, build his fitness up because, you know, he's just come off a, I think it was a quad injury or groin injury, something like that. So um, definitely should build up his fitness rather than come straight into the team. But definitely could shake up Heaney's role if, you know, some one of those guys comes back. But, yeah, grab him. I think he'd be good. He'll, yes, he's going to have the early buy in a couple of weeks, but he's going to make, he's going to, get some really good scores in the next two weeks and make some coin and probably one that we can hold even after the buyers which is what I'm looking at doing at this stage Toby Pink I already said about him he's a good pickup option as a defender rookie obviously a lot of people are jumping off Caulfield so good pick downgrading there um, the only thing I'll say is obviously Pink needs to be on the bench you don't need want to field him so if Caulfield was on your field Look for an upgrade, look for a Dan Rosio or a Windhager, but if he's on your bench, go to Pinky or go to, you know, a Sean Maker or, you know, one of those other defensive rookies that are going to make some coins. So, um, Tristan Cherry, I, a lot of people are still jumping on him, 2.5k. Um, yeah, can't say much about it. People jumping off Grundy, I'd say. Um, he's going to make a bunch of coin, so that is a good pick. Um, we'll see how he does it against. I think a, I think a tougher matchup. I think I can't actually remember. Um, obviously, what's his name? No, I can't think about it. Um, yeah, he's gonna. I think he's got a pretty neutral matchup this week. So we'll see how he goes again. Um, should probably hit another ton. He seems to have upped his average than what we thought. We thought he'd be sort of an eighty to ninety guy. He's probably pushed his average over to a hundred now. So, which is really good and what a, a good smash pick if you started him. Personally, I'm not looking to jump off Grundy because, like I said last week. I think they're going to put up very similar numbers until I jump off Grundy in a couple of weeks. So I'm more than willing to save the trade and upgrade around him to, you know, get cash generation elsewhere. So not too worried there. Zane Derzner, people are jumping on him. Obviously, he had 85 last week. So had a really good game. Didn't even kick any goals, which was a positive. Um, really just got a lot of that spread ball. Um, so wouldn't expect an 85 again. I think for here a little bit, <clears throat> um, a little bit easier to score on the outside. Whereas you know Carlton probably won't be, 
So we'll see how that one goes. Um, but it's definitely going to make a lot of cash. What was he break even? Negative one. So yeah. Hopefully he can get on the end of a few goals and score well for their owners. Jeremy Sharp, yeah, probably last week I would jump on him. He's going to score consistent 70s for us and um, probably doesn't have the best matchup this week or even next week or the next weekend after that. So, um, but yeah, he should probably be, you know, at least be able to score a 60. So he's one to, one to jump on because he's going to make a big, bit of coin. I uh, already talked about Sean Maker, uh, Harry Sheasel, people that are jumping on Harry Sheasel. Obviously, he's been killing it the first couple of weeks, 120, 121. Um, he just looks like the safest 110 guy at the moment. He just racks it up in that back line. And he actually even features in my captains later on as a sneak peek. So um, definitely one to consider jumping on now. If you're, if you're even probably spoiling a little bit, but a lot of people are jumping off Nick Dacos and looking at getting him to, you know, downgrading a little bit. So um, that's why probably Wangani Malura and Harry Sheasel are quite highly purchased this week. So, um, yeah, definitely the way to go, whether you go either of these options are pretty good, I would say, in my opinion. Probably prefer Sheasel. I think he's a clearer top two defender rather than a borderline Wangani Malura. So. But there is a bit of price difference there, 920 yeah, nearly a hundred k difference. So you could save that hundred k and use that elsewhere. Probably a couple more here. Jack Steele, I think he's a really good purchase. One that I do want to jump on, but just at this stage with the way I'm structuring my team, I'm actually looking at bringing on that fourth rookie onto my field. So bringing Harry Sharp, uh, Jeremy Sharp onto my field. Um, I already have you know the two Uber premiums and Bont and Merritt, and I also have. Butters, who should be a keeper for the year, I'm hoping. And then also Nick Martin, who should also be a keeper for the defensive line. So, yeah, just can't fit him in. Don't have the cash at this point in time and making trades around that. So, But definitely one that I'd support jumping on. He looks really good and has really proven us wrong of what we sort of thought in the preseason with the game change of game style. Didn't think he'd sort of get on the outside a little bit more, but he is working really hard to get back and get you know, sort of more tackles in the back line and working really hard for the tackles. Saw some like ridiculous stat on Twitter, I think it was, that he's had 30-something, I think it was like maybe 33 attempted tackles and obviously 18 of them have been effective. So it just really shows you how hard he works in the midfield and how often he goes for tackles. And, you know, you only need a, a scrummage kick to go out and be turned over and that counts as a, def a tackle for him and it's plus, six, uh, plus four, sorry, so... Um, definitely one that, you know, if he can bump up his disposals and keep up his tackle numbers, then he can go back to his 120 ways for sure. Um, Blake Howes, definitely one if you don't have. Would I be jumping on him? Probably. He's got a massive break. He's got to make a bulk coin. So, um, and is it, he is even a fieldable option if you, if you want a cheaper option rather than a, um, Dan Marizio or a Williams or a Windhager. So, yeah, definitely want to jump on. Gonna make a huge amount of cash in one you should have had already. I wouldn't be trading in Luke Dak Jackson. I know he's been scoring quite well, but we know Sean Darcy. I think I've actually got the injury report here. Wow, it's already on there. Um, Sean Darcy, where is he? He's two to three weeks away, right? So, um, best case scenario, he's three weeks away, um, and even goes gets his fitness back through the waffle or whatever you want to call it. Um, and gives you four weeks, but more than likely it's going to be two weeks, if not three weeks. So you're going to get three more weeks of Jackson scoring at, you know, this 100. He's got an easy matchup, an easy matchup. I mean, he actually has three easy matchups. Well, more he actually has a lot more easy matchups, but he's not going to be solo rock at this stage, I don't think. So, um, yeah, probably one I wouldn't be trading in. Haven't been super keen on him at the start of the season. Has kicked two goals in each of his game as well, which has bolstered his score do you can do we really think he's going to be continue to score two goals each game probably not um we'll see in a bit of a harder matchup this week i reckon so see what he does but definitely one i wouldn't be jumping on um yeah just not not a fan in my opinion go for a couple more here i've already been going for a fair while so um garcia i think is a good option has a good matchup this week and can really jump up in his scoring got a negative five break even so probably the forward rookie to pick this week if you can grab him 
if you didn't grab uh, Dempsey, he also has a good week, a good um, matchup this week in Hawthorne, so he probably could kick a few goals there. Negative break even again, um, and has shown a good, a better scoring potential than say, Garcia. So probably would be my pick if you can go with him over a Garcia. Uh, but there is like a 100k price difference. So um, if you can pick one of them, go for it. But yeah, definitely something I'd consider. We'll probably go a couple more here. Uh, maybe just go to Zach Butters. No, nothing else to be really concerned about. Um, Zach Butters obviously has been doing quite well. Um, has kicked the goal in each game, so that probably boosts his numbers a little bit. Had the 34 disposers last week. Had a lower time on ground last week, which was a little bit disappointing for owners, especially me. I thought this was going to be a 130, but I think he had a bit of a cramp in the fourth and got managed a little bit. So, um, yeah, missed out on probably 13 points there or something like that. He looked really good. Um, would I be trading him in? Yeah, I guess so. Um, he doesn't probably have the best lineup to come, especially this week. Going to be a bit of a tougher one, but, um, yeah, he's, he's definitely going to be around that mark, so... But I'd probably prefer a steal if you can, if you don't have, if you had the choice out of one of them, you know. And that's probably about it for the trade ins. Let's have a quick look at the trade outs. I'll try and give my best opinion on what I'd be doing if I had these players in my team. So, um, first two players I've already spoken highly about is exactly what I'm doing, trading these two guys out for, you know, the, the I think the two guys that were here, Powell and Pink. So I think that's a very common move this week. Um, if I had a giant Newcomb, obviously I got rid of him last week. I wasn't keen with what he put it, put up, and yeah, um, he's looked shocking at this point in time. So, like I said off the top, you really got to jump off these mid prices now, unless you're going to hold him. Um, I know there's a, a bit of talk out there that people are going to hold him again, because yes, he does have a better matchup in the Cats, who don't really have much of a midfield this week. Um, but if you hold him this week, then you're holding him for, you know, at least until the mid-season buys. You're pretty much holding him for the season because you don't want to be jumping off next week. You really want to, you know, get upgrades. So that's just my thoughts there. Definitely jump off. 6K people are doing it. You can get to, you know, that's nearly 800K that you could easily put on, you know, splitting between and getting a damn Rosio and a power probably with the money you have for Sexton as well. so um, And it gives you a sort of a... It catches you back up to the pack, I think, in my opinion, you know. Um, Hayden Young, I know there's been talks. I know he had a poor game on the weekend, scored the 75, but um, I just don't think the game suited him. It was a poor game. Um, North move a bit quicker than what sort of Hayden Young would probably like. So probably didn't get as many tackles that he would have... You know, if it was more a contested game, then he could have got more tackles. But yeah, I wouldn't be trading him out. Like I said, uh, we've picked him as that um, underpriced premium. We think he can go, you know, ninety-five to hundred quite easily. Just yeah, it was one of, one of the poorer games, and I think sideways trading him at this stage isn't a good move. Just give it one more week. If he does it again next week, then by all means, he's a he's a failed um, what's it called failed premium and then you can sort of put money on top of his head to get an upgrade to that top line guy right so that's the only way i took it off this week i'm not so sure he's not gonna make lose a huge amount of cash even if he scores an 84 like he you should probably easily get that he's only gonna lose 9k approximately so it's not like, it's not like it's gonna break your season you know but you know we've seen it in the years gone past that you know the coaches that have won have moved off a player like this that's highly owned that hasn't been traveling very well and jumped onto someone else that absolutely kills it. There's definitely a way, definitely a, a something like something I could foresee, but um, the likelihood of that paying off is very minimal compared to staying with the pack and backing in, you know, your your, your research in the preseason. Lucky Whitfield is probably the one I'd be trading out of these next three, in my opinion. I don't, I'm not confident, not hundred percent confident that he's going to be top six in his line. Like I said, with Isaac coming back into the side, I think let's actually look at that. Uh, GWS not too far away, so Isaac coming still five to six weeks away. So, you know, that's still five to six weeks that we will get some decent 
Scoring from him probably doesn't get us quite to the mid-season buys, but um, by then hopefully our team's looking a little bit stronger and we can make those moves if we need. Um, but yeah, probably one I'd be I could be jumping off if you do have too many of these guys would be the first one to go for me. Green, I'd be absolutely holding. He's been absolutely killing it as we've seen. Um, <clears throat> Probably with number one mid at this point in time. Or maybe second behind um, Caleb Sarong. But yeah, definitely going to be around that mark for the year. Sam Flanders going to be definitely sort of top, you know, one, two, three. Probably probably three at this point of the forwards. So probably one to keep around. And I think a lot of people are going to jump on him, you know, next week or after next week. So I think, what, what is his matchups come up like? Sorry, that was a bit loud. Um, goes... Hawthorne, West Coast, and North, and sort of directly after his buy. So, um, yeah, definitely one that you could be considering jumping on. So probably wouldn't be jumping off him just yet. Nick Dacos is very a very interesting one, and obviously a high topic to be talking about this week. Obviously has a massive break even of 143 after a poor 61 last week. My opinion is that you've started him because, you know, he's, he's going to be the top top defender for the year um i think you just back him in at the end of the day if you don't sell him you're not losing any coin um so that's just the way i see it he's still going to be a good captain option i think he could bounce back this week against the lions um but yeah definitely comes up against a harder matchup in hawthorne who's probably going to tag him more than likely i think it's 99 percent at this point in time then has the buy then has poor adelaide which we all get scared off by the Port Adelaide, but, you know, the the best of the best players, they don't, you know, while it may restrict them a little bit, it's not going to be a breaking score like a, a 50, you know. He, if he's, Nick Dacos can average anywhere from 110 to 120, you know, it may reduce him to an, 100, you know. It's not going to break his season. But um, in my opinion, you've started him. I wouldn't be sideways trading your premiums, like I said. Um, you upgrade around him at the end of the day you don't if you don't trade him you're not going to lose money um, so I wouldn't be too stressed there just the only thing I would be worried about is that everyone else is going to get him much cheaper than what you paid up for him so so that's my only thing um, the only thing I would say is that if you are trading him and you're absolutely certain on that is try and get this is definitely last week for it, and try and get two upsides on both the other sides. So say you go to a damn Rosio, and then you got to get a power on the other side or something like that. So you're up making upgrades elsewhere on your field as well. Don't just go, okay, let's just um, sideways trade him to um, you know, another top eight, a top six to eight sort of player. Then you're not being able to get you know another upgrade elsewhere. You're just having to sideways trade another player. Use some of this cash and downgrade him slightly. Like I said to a Wanganim Malira, that nets you probably 130k. Then that's 130k you can put on top of Sexton's head to get into a top power, which can be a mini upgrade as well. So that's the only way I'd be doing it. If you can't facilitate that, then there's probably one I'd just hold on to for the year. Brody Grundy, obviously a fair few people are jumping off him still. Um, I think it's been I've talked about them enough. Um, he's got two easy matchups to come in Tigers and West Coast. And then you can get off him at him at his buy. So not too concerned there. Like I said, I think he's going to score very similar to Cherry. And I think I can get the same amount of cash generation from a Cherry elsewhere on my field while also making upgrades. So like going to a power rather than sideways trading a Grundy to a Cherry. So um, obviously we score. We saw last week, just as an example, we saw Grundy go out at 90, and I think Cherry was 104. So, at the end of the day, it was four, 14 points difference. That's not season breaking, but um, we also had Grundy that went up 7k in cash. I also got a. Um, what's it? I'll quickly, quickly go back to my team. I also got in a um, Damrosio who went up 52k. And who else did I get in? I got a Bonner who went up 30k. So. Being able to do that trade and hold on to Grundy, it netted me probably, what, 80k? Whereas sideways trading, you know, Grundy to a cherry, it only nets me 55k. So I feel like I'm sort of in front there, even though I did probably lose a little bit of points, but I probably gained points elsewhere on the field. So I don't know, just different perspective. Just because, you know, he's smashing it doesn't mean you need to jump on him. At the end of the day, we're going to have to, you're going to have to trade him. 
Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, let's continue the outs really quickly. Um, Zach Reed, yep, yeah, red dot. Obviously, move off to here, move off to get more cash generation. Toby Green off the top, yeah, get rid of him. He's been doing absolutely trash. Buderick, same as that. Did he have a bounce back game? He scored a 61, so it was a little bit better than the 25 that he had the week prior, but yeah, definitely going to be losing a bit of cash now this week, so yeah, definitely one you can jump off now that it's by. Took Miller, it's one that I'm not 100% sure on, but probably one that you could jump off. Um, yeah, it sucks that these early buys, because he's definitely one I would have started with in the starting squad, but yeah, you could look to get him back at some stage. Vine, yeah, for mid price, so get him out. I think it's been widely spoken about. Viney had the one poor score, so now has a higher break even. Like I said in the start, you've you've selected this guy as you you underpriced premium with a thought process that I think most of you thought that um, Oliver would be out for a little while. Obviously, Oliver's back. He's still the main midfield guy. He just had a poorer game. Does have a higher uh, a poorer matchup this week. I think this one's a very anomaly game, though, considering how dominant it was for Melbourne, and they couldn't really... Uh, Hawthorne were playing keepy off, so he didn't really get around it. Obviously, it wasn't a very contested game either, so didn't really suit Viney. I'd probably say back him in. He could, you know, definitely put up a ceiling score again in a more contested game. So just my thoughts and what I'd be doing if I had him. Um... Probably the last few here with a few more highly owned players. Um, Gibkiss, yep, very similar. Obviously injured for the year. To get off him and get to a guy that can genuine cash. Nat Fife's an interesting one. Probably one I'm looking at maybe even next week if he does put up another poorer score. He does have a, a 46 break even, so he won't make a huge amount of cash this week. So if he's really the worst thing you've got on your field, then maybe you could do that. But like I said, if he can score a decent score in 82, then that's 30 30k that you're missing out on which i don't think he's going to be the sub this week again um obviously it was a very unique situation last week where um they had a six day break and they needed to manage him a little bit so where are they playing this week they're playing on friday night so um where are they playing on the next week after that then they don't play until sunday so they've got a full eight day break so i'd be very surprised if he gets um subbed again that's just my thoughts, unless there's something really going wrong. But um, watch for the sub. If there's a midfielder on the sub, then it may maybe be, be enough to persuade you to trade out him. Lazaro, I think I talked about him a little bit off the top, that um, he's, there's talks that he could be dropped, but I personally don't think it will happen. I think he's been doing well enough in the preseason that he'll be give, given a run for a little bit while longer. He's still got a low break even, so he's still going to make a bit of coin. Um, and has shown the ceiling that he can pop an 80 if the conditions are right. So wouldn't be too worried there, but definitely could be one you could downgrade at some stage um, with a bit of money on his head. And Bonner, people are jumping straight off Bonner. Do I have this selected right? Yeah. Um, nearly a K people are jumping straight off Bonner, which could be a good move. Obviously, he looked very poor last week, but I'm personally just giving him another... Another week to settle in um, was very flux, uh, very what's it called? What's the word? No, I can't think about it. Um, very up and down between his um, quarters. Obviously, he had the zero, then the thirty-seven, then I think a three, and then like a seventeen or something like that in his quarters last week. So, would like to see a bit more consistency, and hopefully, you know, he can jump back his up his average back up to sort of a seventy or an eighty, um, which we sort of expected him to do. So. Yeah, definitely one more week, but definitely can go next week if he does have a poor score again. But again, we can hide behind the best 18 this week. Um, Route, yep, yeah, definitely could jump off because it's his buy. Amon, yep, yeah, definitely not getting the job done. Failed mid pricer. Um, really disappointing because I thought he would do well, but I think Dan Rosio has taken a lot of those marks. I've uh, taken a lot of those points off of him. And he didn't really get involved in the junk time that sort of Hawthorne had. So it sort of shows that he's playing a bit of a higher um, defensive player. So wants to be that breaking line. And f people are still jumping off Fisher, which is just amazing, really. Um, even though he did put up a, a 
much better score in an 80 and has a decent matchup this week in Colton. So, um, yeah, definitely an interesting pick. I definitely wouldn't be doing that. He's going to make a bit of money this week with a bit of better score, but definitely one to watch. If he does put a poorer score than one, you could jump off. But, um, yeah, he's definitely shown a higher ceiling. I think he scored, what, 116 in the preseason? But, yeah, preseason's not much to go off of. Um, and finally, Bontempelli. I wouldn't be jumping off, not this week. Against the Eagles, he's, he's in my captain's sky, my captains to ruin that a little bit. But, speaking of captains, I guess we should sort of get into it a little bit. Um, so, uh, today I'm just sort of, sort of give my top five and maybe some other ones you can t- consider if they are highly owned. So, my... F- Number one captain this week is obviously um, Tim English. Let's look him up. Tim English, he is up against West Coast. So um, West Coast is by far the easiest matchup for Ruckman. Um, I think they're running the Williams in a, in a Barnett. So you'd think um, even for an English, he should get you know 30, to, 30 plus hit outs and then probably have 20 plus disposals multiple tackles, um, yeah, he's just going to absolutely kill it, and I'd be very surprised if he goes anything under a 120, if not a 130, so if, for the owners that have him, what's he owned at? 26%, so it definitely could hurt if you don't have him, um, yeah, I'm definitely worried about that one, the next one is Bontempelli for me, obviously the same sort of matchup, hasn't sort of shown us too much yet this season with, you know, sub pass scores for him, but expecting the bounce back this week. Um, there was no injury scare for his ankle. ankle. So, um, yeah. Expect them to have a big game against the West Coast and probably kick a few goals as well. So, yeah. Definitely one I'm looking at doing. Um, Isaac Heaney is probably another one. I've got number three. He's been absolutely killing this this week. Oh, sorry, this year so far. Um, got t- uh, the Tigers who usually let up a few points for the midfielders. So, um, yeah, definitely good. Probably have a little bit of a tougher time kicking goals, in my opinion. Just I think the Tigers' defensive line's a little bit more stronger than what he has experienced in the last couple of weeks. Um, so maybe we won't kick as many goals this week. But yeah, definitely number three and can easily put up 120. Number four, I have at, have Harry Sheasel. Um, Colton are a good matchup for the defenders, especially those designated kickouts. Um, we know he does that. In bulk, so I think he's easily drew. He's easily gonna get that 110 unless he gets some attention, which hasn't been flagged at this point in time. So he's one I'm looking at be seeing. And the last one I had was Max Gorn. He comes up against um, Soldo at Port, um, unless obviously they name Sweet and they'll sign him, but I can't imagine they would. Um, Sweet's been a relatively easy. Not sorry, Soldo has been a relatively easily easy matchup for Ruckman so far, um, so oh, he could definitely go big and definitely could outwork Soldo pretty quickly, so um, definitely one I'd be considering there, but the only reason he's sort of a bit lower on this list in my opinion is that because May and Lever have gone down, he may need to move back a little bit further to just, you know, we saw it in the last quarter last week when they went down, he went further back just to sort of facilitate that tool marking prowess back there so and really secure the game so just something to flag a couple others to consider that are highly owned that aren't in my favorites um nick dacos like i said i think he could have a bounce back week i think um brisbane are an easier matchup for inside means where are they calling one so they're they're, uh, they're they're a um neutral matchup so nothing too Nothing too much to worry about there. It does have Brisbane up in Brisbane, though. So maybe one I probably would be staying away. And I don't think many people would do it just because, obviously, the scare last week of 61. But definitely could have a bounce back week. And the only other one that I could sort of find that had a decent matchup this week was a Jack Steele. Um, has acid and they've given up a fair few points. He's been going at a good tick. So um, definitely one that you could, if you had him, um, could put the... The VC or the C on him at some stage. I don't know where he actually plays, but this is next week. Yeah, he plays on the Saturday, so definitely one you could probably put the C on him and then roll into an English or a Bont, if not a Heaney, you know. 
But what am I doing this week? I think I'm going to go Harry Sheasel as a VC into the Bont and Pelly. Um, obviously, I paid up for Bont. I really want to use him as a captain. Haven't used him yet, so I think this is his breakout game, and this is the game that really scares people that don't have him that need to get him. So that's just my thoughts for that, and I think that really pretty much covers it. Um, not too much more to worry about there. Um, yeah, obviously this is what the matchups are going to look like. So Thursday night, then two Friday night games, which is a bit interesting. Um, but obviously it's public holiday for I think I think the entire state. So obviously Easter. Um, I won't be able to watch as much footy as I would like. I'll be away, so I'll have to be doing a fair bit of catch up on Monday. Um, speaking of which, I probably will have a video come out on Tuesday then my review on Tuesday rather than the Monday night just because, you know, Monday the Monday game and then I'll have to do a fair bit of catch up on a few other games as well. So there is that. But hopefully that gives you a bit of insight on what I'm doing this week and what I would be doing if I was in a different situation. So yeah, that that I think that'll pretty much do it for today. So hopefully you've enjoyed um please give me a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed spread Spread the word. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments or even um, ask me on Twitter. I'm pretty active on there now that the season has started. So more than happy to answer all your questions. So um, yeah, happy to help you guys out. So that will leave it there. So hopefully you enjoyed. I'll catch you next week. Best of luck for the week to come. Cheers. <laughs>